Hát éppen a nacsakra, akkor kony tudni do, hogy a kudó hajszó kájgi, kudó szent ádó, kudó president do, eight out officials, and federal highway officials, a kia kudó. I will do a little bit of this in, in Navajo, so bear with me, and I will um, try to um, put this in English as well. But um, before I start, I wanted to thank all those people that were involved. Resolution be the Kakao Che, Kodo chapters, Tanelo, Compromise the Chido, Gap Bottle, but I, the Hito Geo, the Bahinson, Do D Ting Bahin, Tinit the Yo, Hashin so, Tandis, Tandis, that took the Yo, the Shield Nishkodo, a team, you get a day's easy, Arizona Department of Transportation, Federal Highway officials, Hashin so, Kodo, Askai Geo, Kodo Tini. And Hanil de Don Hadne, Bahin Sensor, Arnold Sopshan at Arnold Senegi. Do Kodo Pesentash Nishi, so Oh Unique Kahado, Shift Nambo Division of Transportation Pesentash Nish, Jaji, Quakil Tahado, Tassi, Division of Transportation Staff. De Window Rock de Naha is the Ashi at Kodo Nahanta, Nashkodo, Has Chenid and Lenny. Thank you, staff. Yeah. Our Sunna, she had the Doshi Age, also Chaka Age. I wrote, I skipped the inch, Niki, Ani, Pashishin, Aro, Kubash, Ali, the Shinan, Chisko, the Shichi, but I mentioned Aro, Ani, Do, Major Hon, Akodo, Division of Transportation, Aja, Kidnish, in a team, the initiative, Aja, but I should not initiate. Though he had the initiation, she not only the Nothing, she so. Mihi kao je do kodo e hun so e ya sadi be hasi do le do hiha this morning. Thank you. I want to thank everyone for working together these past few months to bring us to this day where we can begin construction on in Navajo Route 20. This is all by when he did da eshpasa anen shtanya da aro kyo ne da aro kakude don disi. Uh, now you have M20 that's going to be paved. And uh, citizenship, it's happening, right? So these are things that uh, thank, uh, thank your prayer. Your prayer has been answered. You've been wanting to improve M20 for years and years, and I remember. Now it's happening. Here it's before you. We're going to do a groundbreaking. We're going to move forward with a new road. I toured the site four days after the highway collapsed, collapsed back in February 20 when US 89 collapsed. And I went four days later on the Ado Kon Eya, the Sweet Osani. The elderly were very concerned about it. Is there an earthquake? In a traditional way, we do ceremonies and prayer if there is an earth earthquake. So they wanted to know it was the, the, the shifting of the earth and the collapse of the road was, was done by earthquake. So four days after it happened, we went over there with some ladies, the elderly over there, they themselves toured, they themselves determined if it was earthquake or not, or just one of those sink, the sinkholes that we, that we hear about. And uh, to what I heard, it was not an earthquake. It was just something that the earth gave way to the sinkhole. And uh, so they were satisfied with that. After that, we, uh, we, uh, we toured, and then we, we just took some pictures. Four days after the highway collapsed, and I met with my staff and declared emergency after that. Because I understand the hardship the closing of the U.S. 89 creates for our Navajo people. Emergency By the way, we, we, we said Earth, the emergency will be called by the Navajo Nation, but it's going to take 
partners with the state of Arizona, Governor Brewer would have to be involved in all of this, the state of Arizona. So that's what we did. And I sent a letter to, to the governor saying my support for declaring an emergency is there for the Navajo Nation president. And that's how we proceed with that emergency call. After that, we met with the people. We heard you say the vendors along the road of 89 says we're going to be hit with a hardship because we sell our merchandise, our jewelry along the road. We make our living off that. We heard that. We also heard from the young people, the young kids that go to school, that it's going to take more time to get around to, to the school to page. And some of the workers to Bad Page were concerned about how long it's going to take for extra hours to go around Tuba City. All of those we have heard concern from you, and we have put, took that all into, into our calculation and declared an emergency and make it happen. Not only were our children rerouted to a longer bus route, and workers had to put in extra hours just to get to work, the local economy also was affected by the road closure. I knew that we had to begin to work to make Navajo Route 20 a safe and passable detour. Arizona Department of Transportation and the Bureau of Affairs understood and agreed to fund paving of the N20. Our people then told us paving is not enough. They told us we have open range livestock. They are a drainage issue and safety issue for local residents. That's something that we need to be aware of. All I told my public safety director, John Billison, I said, you need to, and also we talk about jurisdiction and also talk about livestock. And, uh, and we need to be, be very, very notice, uh, be cautious about those. And notice that I don't know how we can handle it, but those are some of the things we talked about with my public safety director. And I'm hoping to see that the state police, the Arizona uh, law enforcement, and the Navajo law enforcement uh, develop something to work together to make to, to make it safe for the N24 people to travel. And uh, I am happy to report the pave, the paving project for N20 now stands at 35 million, and will include fencing, culvert, and turning lane, and an, an appropriate speed limit for the safety of all. And some of these roads, I believe they're curved. Oh yeah, yeah, or it was about it. So you have to obey those speed limits. And they will enforce it. And also be aware of the livestock. I don't know, the local leadership around here needs to uh, look, uh, look at that. Uh, maybe talk about it. Shall we have a fence or shall we not? So those are things that's in your hand as leadership. You have that power and authority by the election that you took and how they make you leaders in different areas. So those are something that you need further discussion. The 35 million was 20 million, uh, 15 million added on, which I'm very happy to hear now it's 35 million. This new road is a bless, blessing for the Navajo Nation and shows how partnership with tribe, state, and federal agency can possibly improve the lives of Navajo. Amen to that, I can't say any more than that. We need to continue doing that. We live here, we're going to be here forever. Why not work together, make it easier for our honor's hope. And we're citizens of the state of Arizona. We vote. We vote also in Navajo Nation. We're citizens of the Navajo Nation. And all of us use this road. We have people from outside, tourism, money, economy, they all use this road. I do know Tuba City is flourishing and booming in economy. I see trucks going through there, hotel, lodging, all full to the, to the, every night. And people at the restaurants are full. I've been there, I've seen it all. How a change of lane, a change of road can bring so much blessing to a town like, like Tuba City. If it's, you know, it's amazing what they're going through, they're happy. A20 has been needed improvement for more than 40 years. And now we can begin a new chapters of travel, not only for our local, uh, resident who will use the road the most, but for our visitor who helps sustain the tourism economy in northern Arizona. Though we are not done with paving in 20 or reconstructing US 89 today, we are showing the great, the great good thing that can occur when all governmental agency works together. 
I want to thank the BIA Resource Development Committee and the Navajo Nation Council, local chapters, leadership, and the new, and the many departments that assist with the quick processing of contemporary construction at Eastman. And by working together, we have proven that we can complete major projects like this and improve the quality of our of lives for our Navajo people and our, our Arizona citizen and also the American citizen. We have shown the people how quickly, quickly we can mobilize when we work together. So I am expecting that in the future, we can show the same result, resolu resolution and find a solution that we can agree with and more forward to for the sake of our Navajo people and the citizens of Arizona and American citizens that are traveling our roads to see our wonderful, wonderful, beautiful country in Arizona and also in the Navajo Nation. Thank you and Kiaha for inviting me and my wife and our staff, the Navajo Nation, to care of yourself when this road is built, travel safe, and be glad and thank all the workers. Obey the construction workers. Sometimes we tend to see people along the road working. It seems like we put more gas to our pedal. And our law enforcement will be there to enforce it. So remember that. So be safe. Uh, keep it safe for our workers. They're doing the work. And if you have time, give them a cup of coffee. Give them a bottle of water. Thank them for the efforts they're doing. It's a pretty hot day out there. So again, thank you. Thank you very much. I want to congratulate the community of Gap Bottaway and in Coppermine. Uh, for really, it's, it is you that has um, accomplished this today. I know a lot of thanks is going to us as um, bureau officials, federal officials, state, county, uh, Navajo Nation government. Um, but I think that the community membership and the leadership in these both, both of these communities, um, based upon their willingness and based upon their ability to see the need uh, for this particular road to be built through their communities um, is what opened this door, is what made this um, come to realization, is what allowed us to come together and um, create this main artery for services to be provided between the Navajo Nation, the community of Page, and into the state of Utah, as well as into um, more into the Arizona area, uh, northern Arizona. And so I know the community members, um, um, there, there's, it, it's a huge impact. There's a huge differences that can, will be made into the lives uh, of this community. And um, it's a lot of decision making that the community had to engage in. And in the end, uh, the decision was to, yes, let's agree. Let's agree that we want this built, road built. Here's how we want it built. And here are some considerations that we want uh, the engineers that are assigned to take into consideration. And that shows, demonstrates true uh, leadership. And I think, uh, and I commend you for engaging in that and taking those measures on behalf of your community as well as um, the community members that are represented here and those that are not able to be here. It's really an honor to be here today, standing here with President Shelley, with all the chapter officials and, and seeing the dedication uh, in order to make this a reality. Um, the cooperative efforts, you've heard a lot of that and, and we'll hear that from myself as well, in order to be able to move this project forward in just a short three month time period. We, we know and we heard transportation is very personal to the community and to those that use the roads. And US 89 is just not another state highway, it's a critical route along which Children are transported to and from schools. Uh, commuters, hardworking people, use that to commute to their jobs. And goods and services are delivered uh, via that state route. And people coming to enjoy the Lake Powell and the beauty of the Colorado Plateau as well. So after the, the February 20th landslide, we really tried to move quickly to ensure that motorists 
could travel through the region by establishing a detour along US 160 and State Route 98. But we knew that detour route with its out of the way 45 miles additional uh, aspect was uh, posed a negative impact on the community members who rely on 89 every day. And so early on, Navajo Route 20 stood out as a, as a better route for an interim US 89 detour. And uh, working with the communities and working with BIA, Federal Highway Administration, the Department of Transportation, Navajo Department of, Division of Transportation. And based on my experience, I can tell you that uh, generally road construction projects typically do not materialize in a three month time period and a project where you're paving and improving 27 miles of roadway can really take years to become a reality. But this project became a reality much more quickly and here's why. Um, really, it, it, it boils down to the partnerships that were established within um, the different agencies working together. Since 1992, Arizona DOT has utilized a very specific partnering process on every one of our construction projects. And, and what we hold near and dear in terms of our partnering principles are really echoed in, in why this happened so quickly. The communication that happened between all the agencies in a quick time frame, the commitment and the cooperation and then the continuous nature of all of that happening together. And, and the partnering workshop for the actual construction project just was conducted this past Wednesday in Flagstaff. And we had about 75 people attending with representatives from the various agencies that have been mentioned today. And speaking of those partnerships, I should point out that since 2004, ADOT and the Navajo Nation have maintained a, a formal partnership in which we follow a standardized method of collaborating on projects and incidents related on the state routes through traveling through the nation's land. And we've established those contacts and those relationships and that really helped with uh, moving this project in a, in a quicker manner. And without that direct collaboration between ADOT tribal leaders, chapter presidents, and the Navajo Division of Transportation, we wouldn't be here today in, in such a quick time frame to celebrate returning mobility to the region. So we, we thank you, we thank the Federal Highway Administration in a very unprecedented manner of uh, putting forward the money up front rather than on a reimbursement basis and that just helped move this project along a lot quicker as well. So my thanks to all of our partners, ADOT staff members who are here today have been very, very instrumental in making this a reality. The Navajo Nation, the Division of Transportation, Federal Highway Administration, BIA, Coconino County, Aztec Engineering, and of course FNF Construction and its subcontractors. Thank you for putting your best efforts in making this a reality today. Thank you again. Good morning. It is a privilege to be here with you this morning representing USDOT and the Federal Highway Administration. Over the last few months, you've had an opportunity to meet with uh, Ammon's hire of my staff. And unfortunately, he's not here with us today. He is at home with his family. His wife is expecting her second baby any day. So um, I did tell him, stay back in Phoenix. I will come up here. So it is a, a pleasure and it's a, my honor to join and share the podium with your dignitaries and the other agency representatives. Thank you for the invitation. The importance and urgency of the recovery efforts of the US 89 landslide is recognized at the highest level of USDOT and Federal Highway Administration. Road closures such as US 89 emphasizes the importance of transportation in our daily lives. We've also heard from you, the communities, of the impact this landslide has had on your lives. Restoring traffic, both short-term and long-term, is essential to the recovery efforts, and it is also critical to the well-being of the citizens of the Navajo Nation, Arizona, and those traveling through. Good and efficient traffic travel impacts the quality of our life. It also impacts the economy. The Federal Highway Administration has a program referred to as the Emergency Relief Program. 
This program is designed to respond to situations like the US 89 landslide. We are pleased we were able to provide the funding through the ER program. Now the intent of the ER program is to repair damaged and destroy roadways. However, US 89 is unique and we had a unique situation here in the Navajo Nation. Through this very unfortunate event of the landslide, we are also able to provide a permanent improvement to N20. Using N20 as a temporary emergency detour will benefit many and accomplishes the spirit of the ER program, and that is making a difference in the quality of life. A total of $37 million has been approved so far for the US 89 recovery efforts. This was $2 million in quick release to Arizona DOT for their uh, immediate responses, and then $35 million for the detour. And we will continue to secure additional funding as we work towards a permanent solution for US 89. I have traveled N20, and I do appreciate the need for an improved roadway. Again, we had a unique situation here, and we're able to make the best of it. But we would not be here today celebrating the construction of N20 without the cooperation and partnership with the Navajo Nation, the Navajo Division of Transportation, Bureau of Indian Affairs, Arizona Department of Transportation, and you, the communities. FHW is thankful for the cooperation and the support of the local Navajo chapters and associations. You have openly and freely offered your views. You've helped us hear what you want the road to look like. The council delegates, the Resource Development Committee and the Navajo Nation have been very supportive of the efforts to use N20 as the official detour. This would not be possible without their cooperation. There is much commitment to working together towards a common goal, and we were thankful for this cooperation. We are grateful for the leadership demonstrated by the Navajo Nation and its communities, by the Navajo Division of Transportation, the Arizona DOT, and the Bureau of Indian Affairs. The spirit of teamwork is evident, and hopefully you're feeling it also. We look forward to continuing the relationships that we have created and to those that we have strengthened through this effort. The construction of the emergency detour is a mild, mild or excuse me, is a major milestone in this recovery <coughs> effort. However, there is more, much more to be done. FHWA is here with you and with Arizona DOT every step of the way. Restoring reliable, efficient, and most importantly, safe travel on US 89 is the ultimate goal. As we move forward, please take care in driving, be attentive and safe. There will be much activity during the construction in the work zones, and work zones are unfamiliar to all of us by nature. And with the aggressive schedule we have to complete this project in a very short time frame, the roadway is gonna be changing daily. So please, be careful, take your time, wear your seatbelt, and your patience will be rewarded. Thank you, and be safe. Today, uh, we are gathered as a diverse people from the different walks of life, different professions, different ethnicities, but uh, we come together today as one people, and that is to take on a road that has many titles too. N20, Copper Mine Road, Bisha Gego Team, 89T, the Detour Detour. In addition to some of the other names that you may call it when you're going down the road. <laughs> this road has many problems. It's dry, rough, sandy, washboard, muddy at times. And it tests the mettle of even the toughest drivers. But today we come together in partnership in cooperation, in collaboration, and coordination to provide a safe, convenient, and efficient travel, and all to serve the people, you. Mm -hmm. 
This will provide the community, the residents, and the general traveling public with a safe, efficient travel. And that's how we embark on this project to make it a reality. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank those who used the land that were recognized for them to consent to use their grazing lands for their livestock and for their homestead to have a road to go through their land. These people didn't have any hesitation in giving their free consent for this project. Next, I'd like to thank the Tsunapas Habitin School here for the use of their facility, to the staff, to the principal, uh, Sonora Isaac, who wholeheartedly support the road project because she's going to have students using the road. And also to the staff and the administration of Tuba City Public Schools, and then also to Page Public Schools for their friendly reminders of when to maintain the road and grade it again. And I want to thank our special guests and visitors, the Federal Highway Administration, for their funding to ADOT. We have a saying that says ADOT, NDOT, and all the other dots. <laughs> and also to the Navajo Division of Transportation for their support and for the coordination in getting this project uh, underway. And then also I'd like to thank the Western Navajo Agency Council. The day that the road buckled, we were all assembled in Flagstaff. And we wrote a resolution and they signed every chapter within the Western Agency gave their support. And that instigated the uh, declaration of emergency. And they, we still have their support. <laughs> Resolution uh, And then also I'd like to thank the Office of the President, Mr. Shelley, and uh, your Vice President, Mr. Rexley Jim, and also to the Navajo Nation Council, Office of the Speaker, and to the committees that approved this project. And they also made it possible to shorten the time that it required for approval of such uh, a project. And I also like to thank the contractors, FNF, and all the uh, subcontractors for their work. They are already working on the road. We're a little bit late in the groundbreaking here. But we want to also invite you again for the grand opening when the road is completed. It's going to be near the Copper Mine Chapter House. And it's, we want to have a big celebration for this road because this is what we have been wanting for the last 40 to 50 years. And foremost to all of you people here, to the people of Coppermine, Badawaikya, Kichi, and the surrounding chapters, I want to ask, do you like the road being built? If so, give yourself a hand. With that, thank you. Let's go ahead.